grooming gone wrong and it's specifically for POM. Um, it's injured in the process. That to me is the most terrible level of grooming gone wrong. What kind of situation will piss you off to the max? This is a is a mouth. Basically, dogs with very thick fur, right? It's not recommended for them to undergo shaving. It's better for them to go for grooming with scissors cutting. Say hi to everybody. Hi. If you can say hi, can go work good. <laughs> Welcome to Oki Doggy. I'm Adeline and this is Bailey. And I'm Chewy and this is Double and Pepper. In this channel, we're going to be sharing about everything under the sun, all about doggies. Bailey! Welcome to our video. So recently there's been a lot of news in the dog community about this thing that's been going on. It's basically an incident of a grooming gone wrong and it's specifically for poms. Pomeranians and I think if anyone of you watching you're a Pomeranian dog owner you will know that how painful it is right for a grooming go wrong for Pomeranians. So with us here today we have a special guest and her name is Amber, hello. Amber. Hi. Okay, so Amber, can you share a little bit more about yourself? Are you a dog owner and what type of dogs do you own? Yeah, yeah, I'm a dog owner. I actually have two dogs at home and both are Pomeranians. One male and one female. Wow, one male and one female. Yeah. Not bad, are you? No babies, no babies. <laughs> Thinking, ah, no babies, no babies. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe let's start, right? This topic on grooming gone wrong. So I want to ask the two of you, okay? What in your opinion is a grooming gone wrong? So I start first because I own a Shih Tzu, right? So you saw him just now, that's Bailey. Um, for me, basically, if grooming gone wrong, the biggest thing would be uh, safety and health concerns. So basically, like the dog falls off, um, is injured in the process. That to me is the most terrible level of grooming gone wrong. Yeah. Okay, what about you, Amber? Mm, I think for grooming to go wrong, basically, first thing foremost, I think if they cannot handle struggling or fidgety dogs, then somewhere will definitely go wrong. And secondly, for because I own palms, so I feel that if their coats are being shaved off to the skin, it is also one of the pointers as well. So like, under what kind of situation, right, if you send your dog to the groomer, and then you come back and you see your dog, you get super pissed off. What kind of situation will piss you off to the max? Mm, actually, honestly, when I first got, got, got my dog, right, I actually went to nearby neighbourhood vets to, to actually bring my dog for his first full groom. Vet. Oh, sorry. Groomer. Groomer, groomer. Yeah, at my near neighbourhood grooming place. Yeah, so definitely for all the, all the groomers, they should basically know the basics. That's what I thought too. So when I brought my dog to the groomer for his first grooming, Actually, he recommended me to shave my dog because uh. that what that's what he did for his own pom as well. So, and so it was a Pomeranian and the groomer recommended you to shave Wang Wang's fur away. Yeah. Wang Wang is yeah, her dog name, dog. by the way. Yeah, and because um, he also owns a pom and I can see that his pom is really fluffy because his pom is also in the shop. So I go ahead with the shaving and I thought that it's, it'll be fine. And I thought after shaving, the fur will be very fluffy. Just you, like you thought, human baby head. <laughs> really? So you <laughs> thought that after grooming, the fur will go jipa boom yeah, like yeah, this? really, really. I thought it's like human baby head. I, 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 if you I shave the head, the head, the hair will grow thicker and nicer. So I thought that's the same for the dog as well. So, so it's like it's like the baby man yue, right? yeah, yeah. Then they shave the head, right? Because yeah. if not, the hair will drop anyway. <laughs> then they will shave, right? Yeah. Then the full head of hair will come out. But, 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 Maybe you guys, because you own palms, right? You can explain why is it so bad, right? To shave your palm, like down to the skin. I mean, not talking about cut short, ah. Shave yeah, down skin. the skin. You wanna explain? You are the expert here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know that palms have double coating. I only know when I hear it from my other palm friends as well. Like myself. Yeah. Mm. So that time when I decided to change another groomer just for fun, I just want to try different groomer. I tried another groomer and that lady also shaved Wang Wang, also shaved my dog to the, but not exactly to the skin, but slightly a bit more than the skin. <laughs> and I actually, actually I heard that uh, they shouldn't shave the dog, so I actually asked her, are you able to scissors? But she told me shaving is only bad if the shaver is not sharp. So I thought, okay, so maybe that's 
another thing. Okay, so maybe yes, can shave just that the shaver must be sharp. Yeah. So what happened back to just now your story, right? What happened uh, to Wang Wang's fur after he went to the first groomer and he got his first shave? Actually, he came at home looking like a cat. No. <laughs> He came out looking like a cat and I thought, okay, I, I mean he's still cute, but he came out looking like a cat. So my parents were asking me, this is a cat or a cat? Then like, okay lah, still cute ma. Then okay lah, and, and actually he, he don't look hurt, he just look cute and everything. I also didn't know that he, his clothing might be like injured or anything. Cause eventually, actually, after a few months later, the fur did grow back. Oh, okay. So after shaving, the fur grow back, right? Yeah, grow okay. Back. So for from what I know, right, it's like a uh, Pomeranian because their fur is double coating. Double coating means there is an inner coat and an outer coat. So what happens when you shave off both the inner and outer coat is this, okay? So some owners, right, they may think that, hey, you know, Singapore is really, really hot and humid. Then they really want to shave off the dog fur thinking that it is better for the dog in terms of, you know, removing heat from their body. But what happened is that, right, when you shave off both the inner and outer fur, the inner coat as well, right, the heat will heat the skin directly, okay? The sun ray, the UV ray, whatever it is that is harmful for the dog skin will hit the skin directly because there's no protective layer from the coat, okay? So by right, the first layer of coat is supposed to be like a reflective shield, okay? It will deflect heat and deflect light away. So without that coat and if you shave it to the skin, it will damage the skin after a long time. So that's what I read. So for my Pomeranian, right, I have never shaved her before. Every time it's always a scissors cut. Yeah. Yeah, so what happened is after the whole incident blew up, right? I went online to search. So I don't know if you guys have seen it before, but there are some poms who are not so fortunate like Wang Wang. Ah. So if you can see, right? So basically what happens when it shaved down? Mm -hmm. After that, the undercoat will grow out way longer than it's supposed to. So yeah, and it's not just for poms. Yeah, so um, the rest of the dogs like huskies and and all the other double coated dogs also Japanese beats as well. Yeah, and uh, what other dogs? Um, basically dogs with very thick fur, right? It's not recommended for them to undergo shaving. Okay, it's not. Uh, it's better for them to go for grooming with scissors cutting. Okay, so I've so seen some pictures, right, whereby the groomer shaved and then the dog fur just didn't grow back to what it's supposed to look like, right? Okay, yeah. so back to grooming gone wrong, okay? Um, do you have any experience of um, your dog, right, being sent to a groomer and it has gone wrong? Because just on the first incident of going to the groomer shaved, it didn't go wrong, in your opinion, right? So any experience of grooming gone wrong? Uh, actually, fortunately, not really. The only thing that went wrong for the first time is when he went for shaving and from a dog, he became a cat. <laughs> and the second one is not, not so much of a gone wrong thing. Uh, I actually brought my second pom to a grooming school to, to groom her fur for free la, for the students to actually... Oh, cheap skate la, you! <laughs> Very cheap skate, no go hey, I'm for helping grooming for free! For professional groomers, I'm helping them to be a better groomer so next time they can groom our dogs nicer. Okay, right? okay. Yeah. But say the truth, is it because it's free that's why you go? Part of it, yes la. <laughs> Yes, ah. so, 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 so it's a pro tip to save money, right? <laughs> Bring your dog to those grooming schools for people. Yeah, okay. For for dogs for to go for grooming schools to let the students groom, the dog must be obedient first. They must be calm, like me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the, the thing that gone wrong, actually they, they kind of scissors my palm's tail. So this is the tail, but right, the fur should look like that. Uh -huh. But I came back the only one side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the other side of the fur went off. So only one side of the fan, the other <laughs> fan, no more. And they didn't tell me, because when I see my dog, I was just very happy. I brought her home, and I came home only see one side of the tail. Yeah, but anyway, no injuries, no no burns, no cuts, then I think that's fine. Maybe it's just one mistake, so yeah. So 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 did you complain? 
Ah uh, no, I, I didn't complain. Did you post on social media? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> no. she looked too ugly with, the, with one side of the fan so I didn't dare. <laughs> no, you never post on social media to complain about the groomer? This one training school. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they are still training, they are still learning and everything. So I think, I think I'm, I'm okay. La. I, I don't feel angry. Somehow you didn't pay money. <laughs> Yeah, two cap there, huh? <laughs> two and fro, so need to pay, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, from my personal experience, right, uh, there was once I sent my dog to a groomer. I think for me, I'm not too particular about um, her not looking good or my dog's not looking good after they come back. But of course, disclaimer is that, let's say if my instruction is to like uh, use a scissors to cut, not to shave, and then they just follow, even if it's like not out of shape, if, it, if it's like out of shape, I'm, I'm okay with it, right? Some group, some owners I know, if the ear fur is a little bit out of shape, the body is not round enough, they may be very angry, but for me, I'm okay. So there was one particular incidence of my dog being sent to a groomer and to me, what has gone wrong is that um, when clipping the nails, they accidentally clip the dog nail and then what happened? Bleeding happened. So, well, I, I don't think that's very nice. I thought like um, cutting nail is something, is something very basic for a groomer. But well, I mean, it could be that the dog was fidgety or something, right? But well, my dogs are actually pretty calm la. So anyway, that was a one-off incident from my experience Yeah, mine was actually when Bailey came back, he was alright Except that he was very moody So I didn't know what happened la. So I just thought he's just moody, he's hungry as usual You see him, he's very big size for <laughs> Shih Tzu so, so basically what happened was uh, after a while, I realised that there was something wrong Like his eyes was very red and he, he was just sleeping very, very, very niam, very attached to Sticky me. to very the clingy, yeah, very clingy. clingy. So, so that usually doesn't happen. It's quite an independent dog. So I brought him to the vet and then I realised that um, at the vet, they were just pointing out that probably during the grooming, his eyes got bumped or something. And uh, like there was some abrasion or something. So he was feeling very, very painful and uncomfortable. So for me, because... Um, Bailey is not like uh, double coated so um, basically I'm not too worried about shaving down I like to keep his fur short tidy and stuff so my priority is actually safety yeah and and like if things happen tell me lah yeah. you know then I can take care of him right? I, I'm not so uh, particular in the sense that I, if, if it's minor bumps and bruises I understand yeah after all leaving animals mm -hmm. so they will move so yeah but Basically, it's, it's that incident, that one incident, yeah. Okay, so next, right, I want to ask you guys, like, do you guys stick to a particular groomer or do you guys like to change groomer? For the start, yes, but now, no. Why? <laughs> Why? Because I actually do my own grooming myself. Wow. Yeah. But not, not really the full groom, but maybe more of the clipping of the nails, shaving the, their private parts, and maybe sometimes if I feel a bit more adventurous, then I'll try to... Oh, not, not shave, but cut a bit of their fur. Next time, Style can is. can you help my dog? Sure! One dollar. No. <laughs> Free? At least I said one dollar. Can I cut also their tail one side only? <laughs> <laughs> okay, come. My dog looks really pretty. Anyway, this is mine. My dog. This is double. Say hi to everybody. Hi. If you can say hi, can go work too. <laughs> it's not mine. No, it's mine. Mine. Hold your mic, I hold your dog for you. Mm. I hold your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Since we are on this topic about grooming, let's talk about how we can avoid this grooming gone wrong. So I have my um, perspective on it because actually from the start, uh, I, I haven't owned dogs for a long time. So um, Bailey is my first dog and he's three years old. So that's that's how long I've been a dog owner. But since ever since I owned Bailey, right, there's been already numerous, numerous of these grooming gone wrong incidents. And I've always thought as a business person that this is something very weird. I could settle it on a business point of view. But I wanted to hear from you guys, right, like as dog owners, how do you think we can avoid this kind of incidents. How to avoid ah? Honestly, it's inevitable, I feel. Cause I wouldn't know how good this person is just by judging on their looks. But basically for first impression, my dogs must wag their tails when they see the groomer. At least feel the aura of the place. 
Yeah, then second thing, if in case there really is any injuries on, on them, please don't like take gong, take xiao, pretend nothing happened. <laughs> At least you say somewhere is injured. I'm really sorry. Um yeah, I, I'm really sorry. At least, at least I need to hear some apologies from the groomer side, then I will be okay. I don't want to go back home and realize, hey, why is this one injured here, got blood, never tell me. Then, yeah, this kind of thing. Like, that's how I feel. Mm. Yeah. Wow, very interesting. Uh. So, in order for her to avoid grooming gone wrong, her choice, is, her, her deciding factor is that the dog must wag the tail. Yeah. So, if yeah. you are a groomer, you want to earn her business, make sure you make the dog wag the tail. Mm. Mm. Okay, so for me, right, I think proper communication with the groomer is very important and I personally would choose to go to a place, a reputable groomer, okay, uh, to groom my dog because, I mean, if they are reputable and there's good reviews about them, then I would say that the chances and the likelihood of any error going wrong is very low. I mean, if their business is good, they would be very careful about their reputation, right? So review first and of course a good reputation among the dog communities and thirdly is a good communication with the groomer. Yeah, yeah. Can I add on something? Say. <laughs> From what I know of you, uh, uh, you, like what? you don't search for a reputable place. You go for somewhere nearest and most convenient to you. That's not true. That's My true. dog go to expensive groomer. Really? Really. Every time when I ask you, hey, they went to bathe, but your dog to bathe, you said, oh no, I just go nearby there, grooming. Okay, so there. my house downstairs, there, okay, there's a groomer at my, uh, near, nearby my place, right? So they are quite basic. Okay, let me put it into perspective. There are, I have to say, right, from my experience, there are groomers that is extremely good and the price is about... 90 to 120 for a full groom so i do bring my dogs to those grooming sessions for example the dog school that you go send your dog to and i let like it's the senior stylist to to groom my dog but because uh, most of the time i don't drive so it will be difficult for me to bring my dogs over to those places for full groom right so occasionally i do bring them for full groom at those places but on normal basis, right, I just need somebody trustworthy. I don't need my dog to look like model-like, right? So for those, I will go to a trustworthy one, which, you know, nearby my house, there's this place. I think, to be honest, I don't think the grooming um, looks fantastic, but it's clean, it's safe. That is good enough for me. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Po. <laughs> it's expensive at $70 per grooming for normal. Okay, sometimes 90 to 120 expensive, okay. Yeah, I think it's more expensive for you guys because you own two, right? But for me, um, if I'm going for a groomer, uh, first thing I got to see is that aside from my dog liking him or her, right? It has to be that she has good control. Hey, wait, uh, you're very funny. You see whether your dog like. I never even check whether my dog like. No, I go to the groomer, I just chuck my dog there and say, Thank you, bye bye. Uh, cut, cut like this, cut, cut like that. And thank you, bye bye. I'll see you later. Call me when you're done. Eh. I never check whether my dog like. And most of the time, my dog looks like they want to escape. <laughs> no, no, but, but, but clarify because I, I would say that because for me, um, actually, I found my groomer in that sense, um, not because I looked for her for grooming. Hmm? So I actually started off looking for her to board my dog with her. To board oh, for boarding, yes, dog boarding. For boarding. So that was quite important, and then it slowly became like grooming as well. So anyway, I think control is more is most important. But I've always thought of this thing that was very interesting from a business perspective. Why groomers? Um, maybe maybe some groomers can tell me or post in our comments, right? Like this is something that has happened over and over again from a business perspective Why can't there be an SOP of when you go to a grooming session, you know, start off with a questionnaire Fill up what do you want for your dog? You know, what's the length of fur blah 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 and sign off and then you're done 
Okay, so so on that, right, I agree with Adeline. That is a very good protocol for any business owner, especially if you are a dog grooming business, you are into dog grooming business. Because I have been to, like I told you, those at more expensive one. Now, the truth is, right, uh, if you send your dog to the more expensive groomer, that's what they do. And uh, there is one particular groomer, they have like a clipboard and a form. And on the form, right, they have a dog shape. And then they will circle and mark exactly and ask you a lot of questions like okay the tail circle then they will write comments how do you want it groomed the body the head the leg the sh the 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 body the head the leg have I said that already yes. okay <laughs> like what what is the the length and the shape that you want it to be so they have a very very nice uh, piece of paper with a chart of the dog figure and then they ask you to fill out very clearly exactly what type of grooming you want it. Have you experienced that before? No. You because you cheapo. All those oh, you sent to all cheap cheap one. All oh, those you sent to don't say that I also never experienced before. <laughs> <laughs> oh so okay. I see I see so it's not common. It's not yeah, common. Not That's the problem. Okay I see I see. Yeah. yeah yeah so so I guess maybe those more reputable ones they already have a certain uh standard SOP to protect their staff la their group Groomer, right? Uh, from all these kind of incidents, I would say. Okay, thank you guys for watching today's episode. I hope you find the session here uh, insightful for you. And if you guys have any tips, right, on how to avoid grooming gone wrong, please do type in the comment section below. And we want to say thank you to Amber for joining us in our show Thanks today. For and Thanks you're, for inviting. you're welcome. Mm, thank you. Don't be a cheapo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you wanna follow her or her dog on their Instagram, here is where you can find them. Okay? And today we also wanna thank our studio. Uh, we are here at Magic Dow Studio. It's a dog photography studio. So if you want to check out their dog photography stuff, you can check them out here. And that's it for today's video and we will see you guys soon. Remember to subscribe and like our channel. See you! Bye! Bye.